got to get out of the boat. Clap your hands up.
Bless your name, bless your name, bless your name. Clap your hands all over this place. Come on, lift your hands up. Ah. When I think of the goodness of Jesus,
through 33. We're excited tonight to have Pastor Young with us. Come on, give God a praise. Amen. We're excited that she's able to be here today. Amen. Matthew 14, 28 through 33. Matter of fact, let me just add some context to the text and read from the 22nd verse. Y'all got it? Amen. Amen. Standing with the word of God in your hand. We ought to have our Bible. We don't have nothing else. We ought to have our Bible. Amen. If it's on your phone, that's fine. If it's on your tablet, that's fine. Amen. If it's a book, that's fine. But let's not leave our Bibles home. Amen. And straightway, immediately, suddenly, right away, Jesus constrained them. He encouraged them. He prompted his disciples to get into the ship and to go before him unto the other side. And while he set the multitude away, and when he had set the multitudes away, he went up into the mountains apart to pray. When the evening was come, he was there by himself. The writer Matthew says he was alone. But the ship was now in the middle of the sea being tossed with the waves. And even the wind was contrary against them. And in the fourth watch, somebody said a fourth watch, of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, a phantasma, a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately, straightway, right away, suddenly, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered and said unto him, This is where we're going to take our text from, y'all. 28th verse. And Peter answered and said unto him, Lord, if it be you, if it's truly you, if indeed this is you walking on this water, bid me, allow me, tell me, give me permission to come unto thee on the water. And Jesus said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, amen, when Peter was come down out of the ship, he did indeed walk on water to go to Jesus. Listen, 30th verse. But when Peter saw the boisterous wind, he became afraid. He began to sink and he cried saying, Lord, save me. Notice now he was not whispering. Lord, save me. He was not talking in his sanctified voice. Lord, uh, save me. He was yelling for fear of drowning. He said, Lord, save me. And immediately, straightway, right away, suddenly, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. If he caught him, he must have been fallen. And said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, watch this. When they got in the ship, the wind stopped. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of truth, you are the Son of God. 28th verse, and I'm leaving my text. I took more time to read than I am going to do to preach. And Peter said unto him, Lord, if indeed it be thee, <laughs> bid me to come on the water. Lord, if it be thee, bid me to come on the water. I want to preach for a couple of minutes from the subject entitled Get Out of the Boat. Get out the boat. And I, I wish I had somebody here. Look at your neighbor and tell them get out of the boat. I need you to yell it. I need you to yell it. Say neighbor you got to get out of the boat. Clap your hands and praise the Lord all over this place. Get out of the boat. Uh, if you could just turn this ceiling fan off for me, it's right there. Get out of the boat. Amen. Let me see this. Amen. I'm only going to talk to you for a couple of minutes. I'm going to preach this afternoon. I'm going to preach this afternoon. I'm going to do a little bit this morning, but I'm going to preach this afternoon. I'm just going to set the text and I'm going to flavor the text and I'm going to season the text and I'm going to let the text marinate 
And then this afternoon, we're going to serve the text. Is that all right? Yes. Amen. But I want to look at this particular text. Amen. We have preached entirely this particular text. We've talked about, great to see you, amen, uh, overseer. It's good to see you, amen. Uh, deaconess, it's good to see you. And thank God when we see our elderly members, Sister Johnson and uh, Sister Ruby, you know, and Sister Mays, pressing their way to the house of God. Somebody say amen. 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 And I, I think that is honorable, amen. And we don't take it for granted. We're good. We're glad to see you in the house. Amen. Let's give God a praise for them if you can. Amen. And so as we approach this particular text, I want to look at it from a different particular standpoint. Standpoint. I want to look at it from a completely different view. I preach this text from many different views. We've talked about it Amen. From the standpoint of the sea, we talked about it from the standpoint that Jesus would have passed by them. We've talked about it from many different uh, 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 points. We didn't talk about it from the point of faith. Somebody say amen. But on this particular afternoon service, I, I want to talk about Peter. Is that all right? I want us, if you would, allow me to take a look at Peter on this morning. Because there is one thing that stood out in this entire text. It is the fact that only Peter was the one that got out the boat. Somebody say amen. He was not the only one in the boat, but he was the only one that asked for permission to get out of the boat. What type of mentality, what mindset he must have had, what Amen. Imagination, what encouragement, what courage, what faith he must have had to get out of this boat. Can you say amen? amen. We are told in the particular scriptures that, well, before we get to this point, we are told, amen, that uh, Jesus tells the disciples that they're about to go, amen, over to the other side. He, he, he tells them to get on in the boat. He gives them the commission. He gives them the order. He gives them the instruction. He says, go inside the boat, and I want you to go over to the other side. We didn't preach that, getting over to the other side. And, and, and they get into the boat. They did what Jesus said, and then while he sends away the multitude, yes. he causes the multitude to leave him. And when the multitude leaves him, he is there in the mountain by himself and he is there praying. Can you say amen? amen. Now, the disciples had already left, listen to me for a minute, to go over to the other side in the daytime. But now we understand, according to the scripture, Matthew makes it clear that by now it's dark time. Somebody say amen. amen. The sun has gone down. And, and somebody says, well, if it's evening time, then uh, they were supposed to go over to the other side. What did the journey entail? Somebody say amen. amen. I did my extra biblical studies. I found out, amen, that the journey was really not that far. It really was not a long journey. According to amen, certain texts, it tells us that they could arrive there in three hours. Amen. A three hour tour. But the weather started getting rough and the tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the middle would be lost. Y'all know that one. Those Gilgan Island. Amen. But it was a three hour tour. But this three hour tour became to be prolonged. Somebody say amen. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you quickly, as I just jumped to one point, that even though God may tell us to do something, he's not telling us we're not going to have no trouble doing it. Somebody say amen. Uh, maybe I'll make these points this afternoon. I'll get a better response. Uh, when God tells you to do something, sometimes we think because we're doing what God told us to do, everything ought to be all right. But the fact of the matter, Sister Ruby Dupree, is that sometimes, sorry to use your whole government name, is that sometimes, amen, God can tell you to do something and then you still got to go through what you got to go through to do what he told you to do. Yes, I'm closing, I promise. I'm going to try to save some of these goodies and still pass the brown line for this afternoon. Uh, but, but he tells them to go over to the other side and, and so they are 
being obedient to Jesus. They, they're listening to him. They get in the ship and they start to go over. Jesus does not go with them. Here is where I have a problem because anywhere Jesus is not going, I don't want to go. I don't know about you, beloved, but there's places I don't go because I know Jesus ain't going to be there. I don't go to the club, not to say that he's not, he's everywhere at one time, but you'll never see Jesus bumping in the club. Y'all ain't talking to me. Amen. There's some places that he's not at. His spirit is not there, and I am not going there. I want to be in this season where Jesus is. I only want to be where Jesus is. I don't want to be nowhere that Jesus is not going to be there. If I were the disciple, I believe I'd have said, no, Jesus, get in ship and go with us. Somebody say amen. amen. But being obedient, they get in the ship. Jesus leaves them, go to the mountain, and he begins to pray while he's there praying by himself. The writer here does not tell us what prayer he was praying, neither does it tell us what he was praying for. Now here's something I need you to understand, and I'm going to my text. Uh, one thing you must be clear about is that if Jesus had to pray, we're going to have to pray too. I ain't got no help here. We're living in the day when people don't want to pray. And let me clear the road when I'm talking about prayer. I'm not just talking about a corporate prayer on Friday night when you get on your knees or you get on the prayer line. I mean a prayer when you riding in your car and ain't nobody there but you and Jesus and you can allow the tears to run down your face and you can just talk to Jesus like you want to. The songwriter said, I had a little talk with Jesus, told him all about my trouble. He heard my humble cry and answered by and by. Somebody they say amen. Jesus goes to the mountain and pray. While he's up there praying, the Bible says something in the verse 24 begins to happen down in the midst of the sea. The sea began to become uh, tossed and uh, the waves began to blow. Now this has been happening for some time because by now the disciples are in the middle of the storm. They're in the middle of the sea and they cannot get to the other side. They are rowing all they know how to row. The faster the water is coming in, the faster they're trying to dip it out. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation situation where you've been in a boat that was sinking. Yes. Never have I been in that situation, Alan, where I was in the boat that was sinking, but I did come close. I got into Pastor Brown dinghy one time without proper instructions. He told me, go ahead. Got in the boat, got in the middle. Amen. And where was that? The river, middle of the river. And the boat was contrary. I was trying to get back to the, the docking bay, but the boat was taking me farther and farther out in the river. And I looked at Pastor Brown for a little bit of help. And Pastor Brown threw his shoulders up, lifted up his arms. I said, if you won't make it back, you won't have to do some rowing on your own. We ain't got no rope to pull you. You're going to have to row. Somebody say amen. I discovered right then and there that it's not good to be in the water by yourself. And so the disciples are here in this boat. All of them are here. They're in the boat together. Somebody say amen. Everybody, all the disciples are there. Every last 12 of them are there. And according to the writer of this text, extra biblically we find out that there were other people in the boat as well. Somebody say amen. They're in the boat. God bless you, Sister Jocelyn. They're in the boat. And they're in the boat and they're trying to get to the other side. They're rowing with everything they got, but the water is not letting them get there. The winds are not letting them get there. The faster they can dump out the water, the faster the water was coming. Have you ever felt like that in your life? That the soon as you get over one thing, here comes something. That, as a matter of fact, you ain't even really got over that thing yet. But now, I, I'm going to save some of these points for later on. You haven't even gotten over this, but now says here now that they have become, gotten in trouble now they cannot get to the other side of the boat so they can't get to the other side uh, of the river they are, can't get to the other side of the sea now they are stuck in the middle somebody say amen there was a song I believe it was it said stuck in the middle again or they are back in the middle again something like that but now they're stuck in the middle trying to get to the other side and the Bible tells 
tells us this, amen, while they're trying to get to the other side, the sun that went down. What that means to me and you is this, now the situation had become more dire because it would have been one thing to try to get out during the daytime. It's something else altogether differently to try to get out at night. Somebody say amen. Nighttime represents trouble. Nighttime represents trial. Nighttime represents tribulation. Nighttime represents going through. Nighttime represents heartaches and pain and trouble and situations and circumstances. Somebody say amen. And I don't care who you are. I don't care what your title is. I don't care what you call yourself. All of us will have a nighttime experience. Can you say amen? You might be going through the daytime now. But if you live long enough, God, I wish I had a church here. If you stay around long enough, preach to yourself, Dr. Young. If you live here long enough, you will have a nighttime experience. A nighttime experience means you can't find no help nowhere. Have you ever reached out to folk and couldn't find them? That's a nighttime experience. Have you ever felt all by yourself? That's a nighttime experience. The disciples are experiencing a nighttime experience. Shout hallelujah. While they're experiencing this nighttime experience, the Bible tells us that Peter, amen, is, is there uh, uh, with the disciples. And we're going to talk about Peter, amen, some more this afternoon. But one thing I like about Peter, Peter is the one in the group that always has an opinion. Uh, he's the one in the group that's the first one to talk. He's the one in the group that doesn't care what you think about him. Somebody say amen. And the Bible tells us that Peter looks out there while the ship is being tossed and driven in the sea. Peter looks out and sees something. Somebody say amen. Now according to the Bible, the Bible tells us that Jesus was already walking on the water amen toward the disciples. Can you say amen? He is already on his journey. He is not waiting for them to call him. He is on the journey on the water. Now I submit to you, come on a little closer, Alan. I feel like having church in three minutes. I submit to you, I don't really know where Jesus was going. According to the text, it does not tell us. Matthew is not clear enough about the destination of Jesus. Matthew does not tell us why Jesus started walking on the water. Matthew is not clear about the fact whether or not Jesus was going to the disciples uh, are going somewhere else. But what Matthew does say is that he would have passed by them. Somebody say amen. He would have walked right past them. Ah, uh, uh, the reason that I feel like preaching a little bit, I'm going to save some for this afternoon. Uh, but the reason, the reason, the reason, uh, the reason he did not pass them uh, is because in the midst of the water, somebody called his name. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. I'm going to preach for a minute. I got to go and save a little bit for this afternoon. Uh, in the middle of the water, somebody calls his name. Uh, neighbor, you've been calling everybody. You've been calling Big Mama Auntie. Uh, you've been calling Unc. Uh, you've been calling Boo. Uh, you've been calling everybody. You've been calling your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Uh, you've been calling everybody. You had them on the three-way, the four-way. Uh, you had them on the group chat. You've been up, all up and down social media, telling everybody about your problem, but I submit to you this afternoon, you forgot to call the one person that has the ability to get you out of your situation, sometimes it's not who you call, sometimes it's what you're calling for, but then there is a time that you got to call the right person, if I'm broke, I don't need to call somebody else that just is broke as I am, but if I need help, on the name of Jesus. High five the neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to call his name. I'm going, Pastor Brown, I'm going to save a little bit, but you got to call his name. He would have passed by them. He would have kept on walking on the water. I submit to you, I don't really understand why Jesus was on the water. Amen. Y'all might say he was on the water because he wanted to get to the disciples. But according to the text, he was getting ready to pass them. But something happened in the middle of the blue ether. He would have passed them. But instead of passing them, 
somebody saw him. Amen. The Bible says that the disciples looked out and began to pray and said it's a ghost. It's a phantasm. It's a spirit on the water. Peter looked with his eyes and fixed his attention and said he walked like Jesus. He looked like a figure of Jesus. I don't know. It just might be Jesus. But just in case it is Jesus, I'm going to call his name. And Peter opened up his mouth and he said, Master, is that you? And he said, it is I. And Peter said, I can't believe that. But if it's you, do me a favor. Let me walk on the blue ether just like you. And Peter got out of the ship and walked save the rest. But check this out. Check this out. Check this out. Peter was the only one that got out the ship. As a matter of fact, I'll go a little further. Peter was the only one that asked for permission to get off the ship. All the disciples were right there with him. I need some people with me in this season that got a Peter mentality. Yes. I ain't got no help. Y'all should y'all miss your opportunity. Listen, listen, listen. You want me to yell and scream? You missing your opportunity to shout. We need some people with us that got a Peter mentality. Y'all stay in the ship. It's all right. You're going to die in this ship. This ship going down anyway. So I'm getting out of this ship. Be Jesus on the water. Why am I in the ship? If Jesus on the water, I need to get What blew my mind, overseer, what blew my mind, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Judas, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Bartholomew, Judas, of Thaddeus, and Simon, all was on the ship. They didn't say nothing. Nobody, the ship, I'm, I'm done, play something softly so they can know I'm done. The ship, was going down. The ship was going down. The ship was already going down. Oh, they were about to drown. I think it was Mary J. Blige that I'm going down. Because you ain't around. My whole life turned upside down. I'm going down. The ship. I don't woke some of y'all up. Y'all just woke up. The ship. And now you can't stop singing it in your head. The ship. What's going down? Here's my thinking. If the ship is already going down, what do I have to lose trying to get to Jesus? I gotta, I gotta save this for this. I gotta save this for this afternoon. I, I can't even get to all of it. But Peter was the only one that had a mentality that y'all stay here and die. If I'm gonna die, I'd rather die with Jesus. I don't know about you. Goodbye, my few. Goodbye, Mark. See you later, alligator. What about me? If it be you, let me come. Now Jesus just says, come. It takes a different kind of faith. I could understand it if Jesus had to grab them by his hand and pull them off the boat. Like he did the man that was laying when he lifted him up and immediately his Jesus said, 
was come. And Peter stepped down out of that ship. Can you imagine? I'm done. I promise. Can just, just this last point. Can you imagine that first step on the water? Now, he's imagining in his mind that I'm going to step on nothing. But I'm believing God that something is going to be there. I ain't got no help up in here. I, I ain't got no help. I got the wrong touch. I got the wrong touch. I need some Peters that don't mind stepping when you don't see the money. I, I need Peters that don't mind stepping even though you still feel sick. I need some Peters. Baby, y'all not getting it. Y'all not getting it. Y'all not getting it. Y'all not getting it. I feel it in my belly. Uh, he steps on the water. This is what blew my mind. It's one thing to step on the water. Maria, this one for you. Because you got a scientific mentality. You like to analyze stuff. So here's a little something for you to analyze later. It's one thing to step on water. It's another thing to walk on water. Y'all ain't talking to me yet. My last, I'm really, I'm done. I'll save this for this afternoon. Pastor Brown boat, we was riding in this boat and Pastor Brown was speeding. I mean, we, were, we were out. The wind was blowing my hair, if you can imagine that. And his boat ran on dry ground. Lifted off the water. And the water went down. And the boat was on top of the ground. And Pastor Brown said something to me. He said, you're going to have to walk out there. <laughs> what was I going out there for? Yeah, you're going to have to take this rope. <laughs> now listen, listen, listen to me, y'all. Go on, Ray, catch this. Your, da your dad is a mess. He said, he said, it was only me and him on the boat, so... You know, we was having a good time, right? Until we got stuck. <laughs> Ran the ground. So the boat, the, the water went down, and the boat went up on solid rock, just like that. You couldn't see no water. You see land, but you don't know where the land gonna stop and where the water gonna start. And we don't even know when the tide's gonna come back up. So Pastor Brown said to me, listen, the tow boat is gonna be way over there. So I'm gonna need you to take this rope Walk on this ground to the tow boat and tap it to the boat. And all my life, I always wondered what I would do in a situation like this. I told Pastor Brown, you got to be crazy. You see, if I walk on this ground, you and me going to stay on. If you ain't going, I ain't going. If you going, I still ain't going. So I got a picture in my phone. I took a picture of it. I couldn't believe it. He walking with the rope. Going to the tow boat. Now, but he's walking on the ground. Can you imagine Peter when he steps down from the boat? I'm, I'm done. I just want to show you something. I never looked at it like this. First time he stepped down, he should have went down. But the water held him up. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Only Start moving, and some of y'all need to understand. This 
area. We're located at 1501 Germantown Avenue in the heart of Germantown, Philadelphia. Our services are every Sunday at 12 o'clock noon. Why don't you be our special guest? You can contact us by email at newredeemchurch at gmail.com. That's newredeemchurch at gmail.com. This is your friend, your brother, Apostle Young, saying I love you and nothing you can do about it. Stop the high, you can't stay low, Jesus. 